Thank you very much for coming. This is our Seasbot Seascaller BOF. Um, my name is Alexander Nagyuk. I'm part of the Seasbot team at Google. And uh, let's start. So, yeah, I assume most people here are already familiar with the Seasbot and Seasbot reports that we sent over the LKML. But just to recap, uh, Seascaller is a standalone kernel fuzzing tool. It appeared in 2015, uh, and Seasbot um, is a continuous kernel fuzzing system that also builds the kernels, fuzzes the kernels, aggregates the reports, and sends them out to the mailing lists. Uh, so far, it has uncovered more than 10,000 findings in the kernel, and um, in the current day, uh, there are almost 5,000 kernel commits that mention Seasbot or Seascaller. Um, our email reports uh, look like this. We include the information on the kernel tree we have been fuzzing, the console output, the kernel configs, reproducers, whatever we could collect. Um, and uh, also, just in case, we also have a web dashboard that's accessible via cscolor.appspot.com. If you click there, you will find um, 1,200 open bugs. And uh, as you can see, you can also filter them by your subsystem. So if you're in only interested in a subset of them, you can click on the subsystems menu and select the ones you're interested in. Uh, okay, uh, some figures of this year, uh, and just to ensure fair comparison, uh, collected them up to August. So this year we have already reported uh, almost 1,500 bucks uh, compared to 944 last, for, for the same period last year. There have been also more fixes, 530 fixes compared to 479, uh, and there is mm, growth in the number of text tested fixed candidates. That is, if you have, mm, have a patch candidate for a Sysbot bug, you can ask Sysbot to apply to the kernel, to build the kernel, to run the reproducer, and report to the result. So it's good to see that mm, more and more people are using that feature. But unfortunately, yeah, there are still many bugs that need to be addressed. Uh, this year, mm, a lot of effort has been invested in improving uh, the actual Syscolor fuzzing engine, which did not receive that much attention in the last years. Uh, I won't go into much detail here because, well, it's, it's a Linux development conference, um, but in Overall, um, Syscaller uh, architecture consists of a host process and of a number of virtual machines that the host process has created. It used to be the case that um, the f each of those VMs had their own mostly independent fuzzing engine, which well was good for spreading the load, but um, it made them less efficient and we had to do a lot of work to coordinate them. Now we have consolidated all fuzzing engine functionality in one place on the host, and it has allowed us to make it smarter and much more introspectable. Uh, also, uh, consolidating the fuzzing engine in one place has let us implement snapshot-based kernel fuzzer. Um, that is, we, after the virtual machine has booted and is ready to execute programs, we take a snapshot, we execute program, and then we roll back to the point where we took a snapshot. That, that way, we ensure a very good isolation of the programs. And uh, our objectives were to get much more stable coverage of the kernel code and hopefully improve the bug reproducibility. Um, okay. Look. 
And so far, it looks like it, it works well. We have set up a snapshot-based fuzzing instance on SysBot. It has found 3.6% 3 3 more coverage than other Clang-based instances, which is a lot, given that we have not really contributed any kernel, new kernel descriptions. Uh, it has found more than 60 bugs uh, that were not detected by any other instances, and out of those bugs, 75% have a reproducer compared to the usual figure of 40%, so this is also a good figure. So yeah, as I mentioned, uh, mm, syscaller needs descriptions of kernel interfaces to be able to fast them, and there have not been too many uh, changes over the last year. Uh, the notable, most notable one is that we have enabled big cache FS fuzzing, which has already uncovered 144 findings. Um, there have been notable improvements to BPF descriptions. There was a, um, another LPC talk by Paul Shanyong, which is linked in the slide. Uh, and there have been improvements to the KVM um, descriptions. We also have an ongoing effort of uh, automated description generation based on Clang static analysis, but we don't expect it to work very well for uh, non-trivial kernel interfaces. But hopefully it will work well at least for uh, Netlink descriptions and maybe we can get it to work with many outputs, which will also be hopefully bring in more bugs. Okay, so uh, the results of the fuzzing engine refactoring and uh, a bit of the new descriptions can be seen on this slide. So overall, every month we now report one and a half to two x more bugs. Um, also, uh, I would like to highlight that on our web dashboard, you can find a tab that lists commits that Sysbot thinks fix the corresponding LTS kernel issues. That is, that is these are missing backwards. Uh, many of those, unfortunately, don't, do not apply cleanly, but we are currently preparing an experimental batch of backwards just to figure out the right process of pushing them. And uh, um, the direction that currently seems to be the most promising one is moving towards uh, fuzzing not just the kernel trees, but individual kernel patch series. Um, that is, for example, suppose there's some subsystem tree, we build the kernel at the head of that subsystem tree, this is the kernel A, we apply a patch series that's currently still under review on top of that kernel tree, say it's kernel B. We perform focused fuzzing of the patched kernel. Mm, the current idea that once we have found the reproducers, we can run the reproducer on the subsystem tree, and if the subsystem tree turns out not to be affected, we can claim that it's, uh, it's very likely an issue introduced by the patch series. We do have a prototype that's currently uh, still in progress, but uh, the prelim preliminary results uh, look, look good, quite promising. So the precision is quite well. It's reported very few false positives. And uh, this compared to the bugs that Sysbot has been able to detect later, uh, it also finds quite a significant percentage of them. So if this system actually gets the production and starts reporting bugs, we expect that um, the number of bugs Sysbot would have to re um, find and report later would decrease proportionally, hopefully. Uh, okay, this was the short introduction into the uh, what changed over the year and what we currently think uh, would be the right direction for the next development. Uh, but of course, it would be great to hear uh, your ideas and uh, your feedback. 
And just a few points that I would like to highlight is that uh, to find more kernel issues, Sysbot does need some human aid. So that includes um, contributions to the Syslang descriptions of the subsystems of your interest, or at least highlighting uh, something that should be improved or fixed there. By adding more assertions to the kernel um, and adding more self-checking functionality, we can also help the kernel itself detect more bugs, and therefore Syscaller will be able to trigger those issues. And the one probably not immediately evident, but by fixing the currently open bugs that are probably not that deep in the code, we actually let the fuzzer go deeper in the code and find much more interesting issues. Uh, and the questions, uh, some of the questions to which it would be great to hear some ideas or feedback, for example, could be, um, do you see any repetitive cases of non-actionable blocks reported by Sysbot related to your subsystem? Is there any extra information we could report that could help you debug those issues? Um, don't know, are there any other kernel trees probably we should, you would like us to fuzz? And whatever else you have in mind. Same. I have a question in slide next to it. Patch forging currently work in progress. Um, there's uh, some patch storage and focused forging on of V, right? Uh, can you uh, explain more detail in focused forging of V? Um, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. Uh, so when we, uh, Syscaller is a coverage guided fuzzing, so when it's, it knows after executing every program, it knows what kernel code has been executed well, when the, during those system calls. Uh, so Syscaller is able to figure out what programs uh, of affect specifically the code changed within the patch series. So by focused fuzzing, I meant uh, yeah, focusing specifically on programs that exercise the changed files, changed folders. Ah. So this increases efficiency of the patch fuzzing by a lot. So uh, focused fuzzing are some um, narrowing down some uh, filter-like things, added filter-like things, and. I, I have some question for this. This uh, focused forging are uh, manually executed or automatically executed? Uh, uh, this is a question. Yeah. Mm, yes, it's, it's expected to be, um, th that focusing is expected to be done automatically, of course, because, well, as I try to estimate there are like 50 to 100 new patch series every day. So it's, yeah and realistic for us to be able to uh, automa manually adjust uh, the fuzzer to each of them. But yeah, it's not that difficult, given a patch series, to extract at least the list of files affected mm -hmm. in that patch series. So we, we can use that list of files to focus the fuzzer specifically on those files. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. <laughs> Actually, related question. Um, so I run my own syscaller instance within ARM, um, um, and I normally run my patches on that before I send them to the list. So if the functionality to say, please focus on this was available in syscaller rather than sysbot or was some available for some repair, that would be really useful as a preparing a patch tool. Uh, yeah, just to some extent, uh, it is already available in the form of uh, coverage filter. So you can, uh, in the syscaller instance, you can specify the list of files for which, only for which it will be able to see, get any coverage. So in, in that respect, it already exists. But uh, this one is a bit more vague focusing and uh, yeah, it, is, it will also be uh, upstream to once. Yeah, well, one more detail, like next week's we'll be discussing a lot of like 
2025 year plans in Sysbot team. And like sharing your concerns or your use cases like here. You just highlighted the importance of uh, directed fuzzing for you. Just give us the keywords. What's important <laughs> for you? What features do you need? It will affect our prioritization approach a lot. It actually is a quite huge problem in this team. Like we have more ideas than hands. And like prioritization is one of the main con uh, main complexity points there. So thanks. Directed fuzzing, other things maybe. I don't know. Uh, Andre, for example, um, softly and indirectly pointed to the documentation quality. Things like this. What stops you? What can enable some additional work on your side? Uh, yeah, so currently there is uh, one form of focusing the fuzzer. It's already in place, but yes, I think it's not really documented. It's only documented <laughs> in the mm, our source file, at least the options, right? <laughs> Uh, but yes, the, this all will be, of course, it's all, technically it's already upstream because it's my, in my fork, but it will be upstream to our uh, main repository and uh, it will be available in Syscaller as well and it will be also available, I think, as a standalone tool for fuzzing the specific patch. Uh, I personally feel it's a it's some kind of different problems that we have Sysbot and Syscaller, so people can use Syscaller locally. They have their unique use cases, and we have no idea how is it used, like what parts of Syscaller need more attention, what are frequently used, what are abandoned, in fact, and it stops a lot of things. So personally, I believe that moving more to the web dashboard will give us at least some introspection regarding what features are used. But I, I know I'm not a kernel developer. I like work on Sysbot, but do not contribute to the upstream code. So the guys say like uh, upstream developers are not about web dashboards. It's about plain text and mails. So if you have some ideas how to get that feedback regarding what features are really useful, that also can help. Yes. So first of all, thanks for the tool. It's quite nice, quite useful. I'm curious if there is a way to obtain a full message when you have reports. I don't know if increasing the console log could work because I see that there is kind of uh, it's it's restricted for for the moment of the failure like a bug, it's rigid. So we have like an excerpt, like a snippet, but not the full logs. Uh, would that be possible, or is it currently possible to to get that in the... You mean the logs from the... Um, from the kernel, from the, the, the message. Yeah. Uh, I think we now share up to several megabytes of uh, kernel console output. Yeah, so the report has the little snippet, but if you go to the dashboard and through to the thing, there is a, a link, yeah. On that, the console output link, there is a much more complete log. Just check that uh, here, like uh, with, uh, we, we, we are checking, and there was a small log in the console, you mean console, right? In the dashboard. In the dashboard, right? It was in, in the dashboard when you see every fail uh, run, there's a log and it doesn't show the complete log. Uh, there is a link uh, called a report, which only mm -hmm. shows the uh, the actual kernel uh, kernel report, includes a few stack traces, but it's rather short. And there is a console uh, output or S trace output, I think they're called uh, links, and they, at least they should uh, include. They should include, even from, from the beginning, from the boot time of um, the, the guest. More or less. Up to this certain uh, limit size. Sure. We, we trim it after booting, after the standard boot. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but after that, you should see output. Maybe there was just, if you looked at it, maybe uh, there was just no output be between boot and the crash. Oh, yeah. So that may be the case. But 
generally you can see previous messages. And it's in the there. console, it's not a message, I mean, it's, it's capturing the console. So if I print stuff in the console, yes. Yes. because I want, like, a, I change that and patch to, to print stuff, it will show there. The yes, process. yes, people actually do this. You can, as, you can send the, your debugging patch as a test patch mm -hmm. request, and it will say, like, it still fails, but this is also your debug okay, output, so you, yes, you can do this. Has anyone had, uh, say, recent experience writing C-scholar descriptions for a uh, system of your interest? Uh, thank you. Uh, I am physical user, and uh, I have some question for when are uh, using uh, Sys Manager with a uh, config file, right? And uh, I I want to uh, update it. Did my config config configuration on Sys Manager on runtime, but. Uh, I have been a physical manager with a uh, shutdown physical and again uh, and open run running again. So there is any plan to uh, a runtime configuration updating? And uh, but how big are the changes you typically uh, do when? You would like it not to restart, but just to apply it dynamically. Is it about, say, the number of virtual machines, the number of enabled, disabled syscalls? Like, I'm just curious, mm -hmm. what are those the changes you want to make dynamically? Uh, um, actually, uh, some filter. Uh, I want to updating some filter configuration in a runtime. So, uh, is there any some plan or features in city color? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so far we are just, as Taras mentioned, we are constructing a plan. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, will, mm -hmm. we have noted the feature. Ah, right. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So. So I have, uh, I have a warm feedback for Cisco. So recently I updated Cisco and then the syslang and system log is now country logged separately and but before sometimes before it was mixed in the log and I prefer that because sometimes I apply to uh, salvage repo candidates from the sitlang and it will be started from the sitlang that is close to the crash log so it's very hard to mm -hmm. correlate the crash log and sitlang if it so, but recently, uh, Syscora's process name has the Sys, Sys executor's ID. It's very nice, but sometimes the process, so crash uh, process name doesn't have the Sys ID, and it's, in that case, it's hard to create the crash and syslang. So, I prefer, uh, so I, I appreciate if there is an option to mix the syslang and system log. Mm. Yes, you're, you're totally right. I think that up to the recent rewritings, it used to be the case that the executed programs and the console output were intermixed in the yes. logs. But now it has changed a bit because, well, it used to be simple and probably the only way because the virtual machine itself were printing the executed programs and the it was mixed with the console output just right in, in the output from the virtual machine. Now that uh, much more is done on the host, it's become a bit more tricky, but I guess uh, we can still do that, right, Dmitry? It's <laughs> um, it's yeah, Dmitry said that we could find uh, from the find the uh, program that crashed the kernel from the COM line. But uh, yes, in the, question, in the question, I remember you told that it's not always the case, and indeed it's, uh, if there was a specific program that crashed the kernel, 
you can uh, in the crash report there is a comp field that mentions the uh, sys executor process it's sys dot uh, something dot id and using that id you can usually um, think uh, do I think it's still it's not really going to help you in that regard <laughs> Oh, and I know one one more feedback. Uh, sometimes the so crash crash has the sys lang ID, but sometimes the log does not have the mm -hmm. sys lang ID. So probably it would be better to uh, log the sys lang first and then run it later. Probably. I don't know. Mm, yes. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Yes. It's. We understand the problem. Yeah. We, will, we will note that uh, it should be addressed with, but we need to think about how to yeah. do it Thanks best so much. In, within our architecture. Just one very small observation from a first time user. I've only used Syscaller once with the patch that I mentioned earlier for detecting stack overflows. And I was fairly scared by the complexity, just reading through the amount of documentation before I got started. There's not, nothing to blame. Uh, you, it, it's just huge. So I think a lot of people are put off trying to run it at first. But uh, once I had it running, it was very pleasant to use. And I, I was very impressed. Thank you. help to have a simple script in the kernel repo under scripts or somewhere to, I don't know, help you set up a syscaller instance? I don't know if it's appropriate to add it there. I, I don't know. I don't think there's anything really you can do. It's, it's just already at this complexity where uh, you have to get over this. Like, you have to know that you, that you should need it. Like, it was perfect for the job I, I wanted it for. And um, yeah, I just had to really have a reason to start using it, and I hope that I can use it more. Was there anything problematic or hard to do? It was just lots, or it was just lots of documentation. I don't think it was particularly hard. It was uh, a little bit tricky to set it all up with KVM on ARM64, I think, which wasn't, I think, enabled by default, but. I might also misremember that now because it was a few months ago. Um, like getting it running the first time took me a while to figure it out, but I think it was all in the documentation. I just didn't read the right bits first. So getting it running with KVM on ARM64, you mean running under QEMU in KVM mode rather than TCG mode because the quick start guide is in TCG mode, I think. Yeah. I did not get the details, but I'd like to write them down. So I think there is a quick start guide in the syscaller repo, which is good, but my, if I remember correctly, the, the, the quick start guide for ARM64 sets up QEMU in TCG mode rather than KVM mode. So if you have an ARM64 server and you want to run syscaller on it, it won't be running fast by default. Yeah, that's a good point, thank you. Uh, so one, one thing that I wanted to do in the past is try to reproduce fixed issues in a given kernel binary. Um, but I couldn't find an API that I could ask Sysbot, give me a list of the reproducers and uh, give me the reproducers such that I can run them. Is it something possible to provide or is there something that already exists for that? Um, so I, one possibility is sending an email and say, please run with this tree, but I don't want it to build it. I want it to use a binary that I already have. So you wanted uh, to have a list of reproducers for the fixed bugs, right? Yeah. So we uh, have, I think, a special Git repository tree that lists all such reproducers, right, Dmitry? Yes, but it's not updated. <laughs> <laughs> There is a, a, a rep on the kernel.org. It's called Linux-Arts 
for something stands for something. It has a, a collection of reproducers for fixed bugs. We didn't update it for a while, but I mean, we can probably. Um, there was also an idea of uh, integrating this into a Linux test project and use all of those as a Linux test project tests, but I'm not sure it was that, if it was merged or not, but there were patches with that. LTP? Yes. Okay. And we also have uh, a dashboard API that you can use to get the list of uh, bugs and some information about each bug in a JSON format. I think that's the, the that's, I think that's not really documented. Like we can export these things directly, like and provide some API to do it. But I, I'm not sure it's a correct approach if the upstream community already have some web portals and instruments to download like test programs. So it, it's a to do for us probably to discuss it together what way it looks the best. But you are not the first person asking about it. It happens at least, I guess, once a year or like once in every nine months. So okay, we'll either export them or consider integration with some existing systems. I'll vote for integrations if we have some something stable upstream, like the Linux test project you mentioned. Okay, thanks. So you're interested effectively in a test suite type of thing, right? Yeah, I, I, I was uh, yeah. So I think that uh, distributions and even LTS and the CI project would be interested in having that because they don't want to regress. They want to make sure that they have fixed the bugs. And um, I think for the cases of vulnerabilities, for example, we want to make sure that, OK, any C-scholar report that has a fix has uh, does not affect the particular kernel, for example. Uh, that would be one of the, the uses for that. And the, and the stable kernels. Yeah, and the stable kernel, yeah. I want to make sure that you have that quoted. Yeah, I want to make sure that the stable kernels are not affected by any of those, uh, especially the ones that has fixes. Uh, we actually uh, do have some kind of that information on our web dashboard. If there is. Um... Yeah, it, it. I think it works much easier for stable kernels because you can just you know please test with with this tree but it wouldn't help the distribution. So if Red Hat, Suzy, Canonical, Debian, they want to test their, their kernels, it would be possible to have like the corpus of mm. the tests that have been fixed. Yeah, we, we had an idea of actually testing distribution kernels on Sysbot. If anybody interested, like Debian, Suze, uh, Ubuntu, and uh, Fedora, uh, we, uh, the issue was that we're not sure if they're actually interested in fixing bugs, so if you know, we can do that. Yeah, distribution testing was, uh, or distribution fuzzing was uh, the thing I wanted to mention, but like, uh, from our perspective, current problem and current bottleneck is a bug fixing. So we can find like more does it make sense if some maintainer is already overloaded and it celebrates every sysbot site failure because of like for a month I can like be safe? Yeah, I have a different point of view. My, my point of view is that users are running the distribution kernels and they are affected by the same bugs that have been fixed. So the point is how can distributions, and they would do that, their work, they could uh, provide all the infrastructure, it's just that they would need help picking up all the tasks that have been fixed and how to identify the, the tasks that have been fixed, how to download them, and then they would be able to run on their own and they would make sure that users are not affected by the same bugs that have been found and fixed. You know, I think that that's the 
the point of view that I'm trying to present here. I am from, uh, I'm just going to kind of say things because I don't think anyone noticed that I'm here. Hi, Neil Gampa. I do Fedora things and stuff uh, uh, and possibly things in other places, but I'm also um, a distribution kernel maintainer for Fedora Sahi Remix, CentOS Hyperscale, and a few other things. Um, I would say that from the point of view as a distribution person that winds up having to deal with industry integration issues, um, I would say that I, I would say that from our point of view, I would, I would be interested in seeing these kinds of things integrated within our pipelines as well, because um, one of the things that's quite interesting as a, uh, you know, as a distribution maintainer is that like we will see side effects from the fact that we build them differently than what you guys do. You don't necessarily have in SysBot and Sys, it's called a SysBot upstream, you don't necessarily have the same kind of build flags or config, uh, config coverage that maps to distributions. Uh, I think one of the most recent examples of something like this was, I mean, not necessarily a SysBot case, but like a different case that occurred was um, there was a breakage for ARM 6416K that basically no one had caught because it just wasn't part of any config being validated. Um, and if that was, if there was integration points or the ability for things like this to be used for kernels and builds and configurations that are being used by distributions, I think we would have much more comprehensive uh, coverage and, and honestly a better quality upstream too. Like I think that it would be great for being able to improve the relationships between downstreams and upstreams and making it so that we have um, just a better, a better Linux project overall. It's just my piece on it. Thanks, Neil. Uh, but w would you be interested in that we test specifically Fedora kernel with Fedora configs on SysBot? Because we can do that too. I would be interested in that for sure. Fedora kernels. I mean, like the 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 other thing is that like I noticed with the way that you guys do SysBot, like you're testing against, say, Debian 13 or Debian 12 or whatever with a particular compiler. And like the, the, the challenge here is that your, your bot is only half, like adding our configs is only half the coverage. The other half of it is making sure you're using the compilers that we use too. Um, that, that build environment has an influence on whether you see certain types of or certain classes of bugs. Fedora is often, ahead of literally everybody what's testing upstream in terms of compilers, libraries, integration points, build flags, and the whole works. And so like we tend to get surprised, I think a little bit more often than a lot of the other distributions because of us being ahead on that front. I would love to see that as part of SysBot and maybe a Fedora environment in SysBot, which tests these things with the latest Clang and GCC with our configs would, add to, would, would be beneficial. I don't know. Maybe that's something you can do. It's just, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm just bringing this up because I, you know, from my point of view, I've experienced things where I've noticed that there are gaps in, because of the, some of these environmental or cultural or whatever differences that you wanna, you wanna have there. Are you already integrated with other systems, something like kernel CI? I'm thinking about, like, does it make sense for SysBot to pay more attention there? Um, well, mainline Fedora, its kernels are validated through CKI. Um, and so it has a battery of tests and things like that related to it. But to the best of my knowledge, they don't do anything related to what SysBot does. So that, that is something that's missing. Um, I mean, for good or ill, the CKI tree is, for the moment, only RHEL and Fedora. Um, but because of you know, what, what, those, what, what Red Hat is mostly doing, to note background here, I'm not a Red Hatter. I'm just a guy that exists on the internet. Um, but like, uh, well, I have my own business and whatever, but that's not the point. Point being, um, 
there is a difference in coverage related to all these. I mean, I'm sure there were other talks about this, about all the different ways people are doing testing. You know, I know there's KCOV, there's a uh, kernel CI, there's KCI, there's CKI, there's all over the place, but none of, like my experience looking through all of them is that they, while there's a lot of overlapping coverage, there's also, there is no 100% overlap for all of them. Um, and, and that can be good or bad or whatever, but, um, Sysbot, I think, is valuable um, to integrate. Uh, I mean, I would be okay with seeing Sysbot pulling in like Fedora configs and Fedora build environment to to the general test suite. I don't know whether you guys want to do that, but another way is to see if the CKI folks and you guys, I know the CKI folks are there in person, um, can talk to you about integrating Sys, Sysbot into that as well. Like, I don't think it's a bad thing to have this connected to to folks like Fedora and OpenSUSE and whatever, because, uh, you know, this is the primary way people actually consume these things. And uh, it has much more of an impact if you catch them before they're getting released to people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Thank you very much for participation. Um, we're unfortunately running out of time. As I understand, like next uh, there is break. Uh, so yeah.